90% of millionaires got their wealth by investing in real estate. Real estate investing is a powerful wealth builder to create passive income for financial freedom. Thanks to many crowdfunding real estate apps like Fundrise, Ground Floor, and Landa, the average person can invest in real estate with as little as $10. Hey Raylanaires, in this video we are going to discuss the top metrics I use to find the best properties on ground floor. After six months of investing in ground floor, these metrics have helped me get over a 10% return on my money and invest with much less risk. And be sure to stay until the end of this video to see the top three properties I'm interested in. Ground Floor is a great real estate investing app where you can invest $10 into short-term loans for house flips. It is a crowdfunding platform like Fundrise, but you get to choose individual house flips to invest into. While Groundfloor does a great job with transparency and lets investors know the full details of potential investments, we need to look at key factors to determine if they are a great fit for our own investing style. To find the best properties on ground floor, we first need to look at location. On ground floor's website, look at a property you might be interested in. I personally look at properties with a C rating or above with at least a 9% yield. The S&P 500 or investing in the stock market gives me an average return of 7% per year, so these properties need to provide a better return. I'm going to click on 1125 Fountain Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. We look at purpose, which is purchase and renovation, then loan position, which is first lien. This means as an investor, we will get our money back first if the loan defaults. This is a good thing. Go to Zillow.com to see the location. Type in the address in the search bar. Go to the map view. We can see there are many houses in the area with a track and field close by. Zoom in and we can see this is a very large property on the corner. The neighborhood houses look well kept and maintained. Next, we look at comps or comparable houses. Switch to lot lines and we can clearly see this is a large property. At first glance, it looks like the property was bought at an average price for the neighborhood. Let's go back and we can see this is a five bedroom, five bathroom that was sold for $72 per square feet. Scroll down to nearby homes and we can see 1131 Fountain Drive was sold for $197 per square feet. 91 Morris was sold for $472 per square feet and 1137 Fountain Drive was sold for $160 per square feet. So it looks like there's a good chance this property could sell for more. Looking at the certified independent appraisal compared to other houses that have sold nearby, we can see $580,000 looks like a reasonable price to sell this house. Keep in mind as an investor, we receive the percentage return at a fixed amount, whether this house sells for more or less. So unless the loan defaults, you are guaranteed 10% return on this house per year, nothing more, nothing less. The objective of looking at the location and comparables is to verify the job can be completed, the house can be sold in a timely manner, and sold at a reasonable price. Third, we want to look at risk factors. Go to ground floor and under grade factors, we can easily see how ground floor evaluates risk. The grades that you see for each loan from A to G, with this being a C, is determined by these factors. I like to verify a few metrics to determine if this loan is within my risk tolerance. The better the grade, the lower the risk of default. First, if you are looking for lower risk, be sure the loan to ARV or after repair value is low. For example, the buyer invested 59,000 of their own money into this property, took $404,890 from ground floor, and are expecting to make $116,110 after they sell the house for $580,000. So we take the $400,000 loan divided by the $580,000 ARV to get a 69.8% loan to ARV. This is a bit riskier than other loans ground floor offers, so they rated this as a 4 out of 10. Quality Evaluation Report, which is how reasonably the values of all of these metrics are, is a 4 out of 4. It's important to note that the $580,000 was created by a certified independent appraisal, which gives me more confidence in this figure. Skin in the game is how much money the buyer has in this project. The higher the amount, the better, because anyone who wants to add a large amount into renovations will want to get their money back fast. This value is compared to the loan and creates a score of 2 out of 8. I'd like to see at least $50,000 from the buyer. Location is how well other homes in this area are appreciating and how attractive the neighborhood is. 
This is a four out of eight. With these financial metrics in mind, we can get a better understanding of how risky this renovation is. Next, it's important to discuss liquidity risks. If you're looking for a short-term loan because you need your money after a certain period of time, this may not be a great investment. Look at the projected term. We will receive our money back in 15 months, but there could be a time horizon risk. Instead of defaulting, the buyer may have the option to extend the loan. While we will still get 10% per year, the loan may not be returned in a timely manner. To see any possible extensions, go to LRO Agreement and look at Extended Payment Deadline. The final payment is due May 23rd, 2023, but there is an option to extend this deadline to May 22nd, 2025. So you could wait another two years to receive your money with interest. Also note it says, in no event will the company's obligation to make payments on this LRO be extended beyond the extended payment date. This means after May 22nd, 2025, investors either get their money back or it could potentially default. While I personally have a long time horizon of 10 years of investing and don't mind receiving two more years of 10% returns, if you have a shorter time horizon, this may be a riskier investment for you. Last, we will look at the borrower. We will look at borrower experience, which is how much experience the borrower has with fix and flips and how many times they have used and paid back ground floor. This is a five out of five, which is excellent. We then look at commitment, which means is the borrower doing this as a part-time project or a full-time project? So if this is a side hustle, the rating will be zero, but in this case, the borrower is working on this full-time and has a one out of one rating. Let's now click on the borrower. I'll click Distinguished Property Management LLC, how official, to see how reliable the company is at paying back loans. The focus is fix and flip, which is great to see for renovations. And the borrower currently owns $2 million in properties, which is a nice track record to see. The borrower has low debt compared to revenue, which means they most likely can pay back the loan. Gross margins, which just means total revenue over total projected costs, is high, which is a good indication that this LLC knows how to make money with real estate. We can see this LLC already paid on time and in full one ground floor loan. I like to see these metrics because this borrower has a good past performance. Looking at the three-year history, we can see they completed two projects per year in an average of four months and made $30,000. I like to see projects that are close to the time and revenue of the past three years, and this project looks to be a bit larger than what the LLC is used to. I do believe the overall value of the portfolio at $2 million does create more confidence that they can complete a larger project, so I don't mind the historical numbers. Looking at the borrower, we can see if we feel confident putting our hard-earned money into this project. So now that you know the top metrics I use to find the best house flips on ground floor, I would like to share three properties I'm interested in. The first one is 204 Elm Drive in North Carolina. It has a C rating with a high 11% rate. This is for purchase and renovation and is in a nice neighborhood. While the loan to ARV is quite high, there is plenty of borrower experience to give me confidence. If you research this company, you can find they are experienced and invest in fix and flips full time. TKG Investments has licensed real estate professionals that buy and flip several properties. This provides confidence in me as an investor. Next, I'm looking at 2619 Flat Shoals in Georgia. That is a purchase and renovation project with a first lien loan. I also like the Georgia area for up and coming renovations. It has a good ARV, a C rating, and a 10% rate. Again, I love to see the borrower's experience. There is a value of $2 million with two completed projects and $315,000 in revenue. What I also like is how many projects have been completed each year for the past three years, which is four properties per year. This LLC was founded in 2010, so there is a long history of performance. The third property is also in Georgia, 1125 Sells Avenue. It is under new construction with a first lien loan. The low loan to ARV is 69.6% with a C rating and a 10.5% rate. McCrary Properties LLC has found a great neighborhood and location. They have been in business since 2015, completing two projects per year with $430,000 in revenue. The ARV looks reasonable according to comparable houses on Zillow. 
If you have any questions about Ground Floor, please let me know in the comments below and get $10 for free when you sign up with Ground Floor using my affiliate link in the description below. Please leave a like and subscribe to help investors find the best properties on Ground Floor and make huge returns. This is Supergirl Investor here to save the world and make you wealthy. I hope you have a happy and wonderful week and please be financially healthy and wealthy. I love all of you so much. Thank you so much for watching. And please be sure that all parents are in yachts by 2025. Bye.